All right, Jeremiah 28, look at verse number 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This year thou shalt die, because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. The title for the sermon this, uh, this afternoon is Rebellion Against the Lord. Rebellion. We have a false prophet uh, in the midst here of Jeremiah, and he's teaching people how to rebel against the Lord. We're going to look at this. What does it mean to rebel against the Lord? You know, sometimes we get this idea, you know, of, of yeah, if I live a life of sin, if I go out there and I, and I live an ungodly, uh, wicked life, that I am rebelling against the Lord. And that is true. That is true. But there are other things that we need to be aware of, and we'll soon see in this chapter, uh, that if we hearken to certain ideas or certain thoughts, uh, we are actually rebelling against the Lord as well. But we'll, we'll get to that as we, we read for this chapter. Let's start there in verse number one. Actually, before I start reading verse number one, you may remember in the previous chapter, Jeremiah 27, um, that Jeremiah is going around preaching with this yoke upon his neck. All right? I mean, he, the, 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 and, and he's, he's got the same thing going on here. He's still walking around preaching, you know, walking around the cities, walk, walking around the, the streets with this beam upon his neck. Okay? And then in verse number one, notice this. It says, And it came to pass in the same year, in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year, and in the fifth month. Now, the fifth month here is actually important for you to remember. So just remember, as we begin looking at this, we're at the fifth month of the fourth year of the reign of Zedekiah. Who was Zedekiah? Zedekiah was the, the last king of Judah before the mass captivity, before they were completely uh, taken off the land. So again, we fast forward to future points uh, where, uh, where, where, again, near, near, near the captivity of Babylon. But again, it's the fifth month. That Hananiah, the son of Azar, the prophet which was of Gibeon, spake unto me, that spake unto Jeremiah, in the house of the Lord, so they're in the temple of God, in the presence of the priests and all the people, saying. Now you soon see that Hananiah is the enemy in this chapter. He's the enemy of Jeremiah, right? Hey, but he's a prophet, or he's the son of a prophet here, and so his real role is that of a false prophet. Okay? You'll soon see that he's a, he's a false prophet here, speaking against Jeremiah. He's not liking Jeremiah's message. I mean, we already saw the previous chapter. I don't think my, I only had one like on face on YouTube. If you liked my sermon last week, can you go and put a like on YouTube? There's only one at the moment, okay? It was an unpopular sermon, all right? Well, guess what? Hananiah doesn't like my sermon either because I'm just preaching Jeremiah's sermon from last week, okay? And so, you know, he, he's really irritated. He's, uh, by the way, I'm just joking about the like. You don't have to like it. But, you know, he's really irritated. He's really irritated by Jeremiah's preaching. You know, he sees Jeremiah walking around with this yoke upon his neck. You know, which represented Babylon coming to take him into captivity, and he doesn't like it whatsoever. Now, what does he say to Jeremiah? Look at verse number two. This is what the false prophet says. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts. That's how he starts. He says, look, what I'm, what I'm about to say actually are the words coming from God, from the Lord of hosts. And I've already given you, you know, I've told you, this guy's a false prophet. Okay? Now, <coughs> <clears throat> this is how false prophets are, okay? They will claim that they are receiving a special word of God. You know, it's such a blessing that we have the Bible, such a blessing that we have the six, six books of the Bible, the complete canon of Scripture. If someone says to you, thus saith the Lord, all you have to do is say, where is it? Where is it in the Bible? That's why I hate these Pentecostal charismatic churches because they're constantly, oh, the Lord just told me in a vision. The Lord just told me in a dream. Thus saith the Lord. And they start saying things that are not in your Bible. Not only are they not in your Bible, they are contradictive to what the Bible says. Well, that's what Hananiah is. Hananiah is one of these Pentecostal charismatic preachers. He's not only that in the sense that he claims to be speaking on behalf of the Lord, but he's also one of these positive only preachers. You know, he's a Joel Osteen, for example. He's a Brian Houston of the Hillsong Church. That's the kind of person he is. He doesn't like the negative preaching. He doesn't like uh, the, the judgment, the preaching of the judgment of God that's uh, coming from the lips of Jeremiah. Anyway, thus, uh, in verse number two, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Why would Hananiah mention the yoke? Remember, Jeremiah's walking around this big yoke, right? He's saying the, the yoke of bondage is going to fall upon you. You better wear it. You better serve him. Otherwise, it's going to be worse for you. And so he takes the same teaching of Jeremiah about the yoke, and now he preaches a contradictive sermon. Okay? So Jeremiah is saying, the Lord said this. The false prophet is saying, the Lord said this. And they're contradictive messages. Okay? Kind of like what we looked at this morning. You know, we look at the Trinity, and we look at the oneness. Both claim that the Lord said thus, but 
but they're contradictive, okay? And so we need to figure out, you know, with God's word, which is right and which is false. But look at verse number three. Within two full years will I bring again into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. So we looked at last week, last chapter, that King Nebuchadnezzar had taken the precious, uh, uh, you know, gold and silver uh, vessels that were in the house of the Lord, and he took it and he put it in his own devil's house. The, 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 the worship, the gods of the, that he worshipped, he put them there. Well, this false prophet saying, you know what, within two years, all of that's going to come back, and we're going to be back to normal, praising the Lord. You know, that, that yoke that Jeremiah's preaching about, that's going to be broken within two years. Positive only message. You know, and we know what happened. We know that this, this uh, southern kingdom of Judah was taken into captivity. But this is the message of the positive only preacher. Well, I just want you to notice again, he, he speaks about the yoke. Why? Because Jeremiah is speaking about the yoke. I truly believe Hananiah here represents a man who's obsessed with another preacher. Okay? Because everything he does is... It's, it's not like he's just preaching God's word. It's not like he's just trying to, uh, you know, uh, teach people God's word. He's actually taken the words of a prophet of God and, you know, uh, and basically contradicting that, right? Uh, taking it and, and trying to destroy what Jeremiah is trying to do. Look at verse number four. And I will bring again to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah that went into Babylon, you may remember that these people, not just the vessels of the house of God, but these people were taken into captivity. It says, went into Babylon, saith the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Again, contradictive sermons, right? Jeremiah saying, you're all going to get taken into captivity. You're all going to be carried away. And it, and it took place. He's saying, well, they're going to come back. The, the yoke has been taken off. God is broken. God's done with Babylon. God's done with Nebuchadnezzar. We're going to return soon. And so we have these, once again, these uh, contradictive sermons. So one prophet, Jeremiah, is preaching that God is empowering Babylon to judge Judah and the surrounding nations. The other prophet is saying, no, God has destroyed Babylon. He's done with Babylon. Again, very contradictive sermons. All right. So both claim that they are speaking words of God, but which one is speaking the truth? The title for the sermon, as I said, was Rebellion Against the Lord. Rebellion Against the Lord. Something else that we learn here about rebellion is if you claim to, to, uh, uh, you know, that God said something when he did not say such a thing, that is rebellion as well. You know, if you are uh, listening to a preacher of God's word and they're preaching the truth of God's word and you say, yeah, I don't want that, I don't accept that, that's not for me, that's rebellion against the Lord. It's not just going and doing sinful things, it's rejecting the clear words of God that is rebellion against the Lord. Now you might say, yeah, I, you know, it's not so much rebellion, you might say, yeah, I, I know that's in the Bible, but I, I'm just... I'm still going to walk, you know, I'm still just going to, uh, you know, li live my, my uh, ungodly life, whatever, whatever it is. You, know, you might not be resisting God's word, you know it's there and you know you're, you're in disobedience. Hey, that's a, that's a better place to be than just hearing God's word and saying, nah, I don't want that. Like, uh, you know, I think that's wrong. I, I, I believe God's saying something different. You know, that is a worse place to be because at least the person that acknowledges these are true, but I'm just not ready for that. You know, we know that that person at some point may very well, with the help of God, get to the point where they can apply the things that they've learned that made them uncomfortable to begin with. Another thought that I just mentioned, you know, Hananiah definitely obsessed with Jeremiah. Definitely ob obsessed with Jeremiah. And we'll soon see further on how he's obsessed with him. But... You know, one thing that I've, I've seen in my Christian life, and I really want this to uh, be heard and understood, is you've got to be careful not to become obsessed with one man, one preacher, okay? Uh, there, are, there are dangers. Uh, and, uh, you know, the closest that I've seen to this uh, in modern days is with Pastor Stephen Anderson from Faithful Word Baptist Church. You know, there are people that are just obsessed with him, okay? Obsessed. Now, look... I love the preaching. I love church. I love hearing from God's word. But ultimately, this is supposed to point us to the Lord God. You know, our obsession, our love, our admiration ought to be on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Any good preacher is going to point you to Christ. But here's the thing about man. We often like to just see another man and, and lift them up, you know, higher than they should be lifted up. And this is dangerous ground. Why am I saying this? 
Because one thing I've observed, again, with this uh, pastor, and I love Pastor Stephen Hansen, you know, I count him a friend, okay? But the same people, some of the same people that have obsessed about him have turned their ministries about just attacking the man, okay? So they become obsessive in their attack for the man, or against the man, right? Instead of being a preacher that opens up God's Word and says, you know what, I'm going to teach you from the Bible what God has put in my heart, what I've read, what they do instead, Hey, what did Pastor Stephen Anson preach? Now let me preach the opposite. Let me be contradictive to what he said. Hey, that, 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 you know what that is? That's signs of obsession. Okay? That person is a Hananiah, you know, in light of Jeremiah. Jeremiah's just preaching God's word. Hananiah says, you know what? I don't like what Jeremiah's saying. Uh, you know, he's, he's upset me. He's hurt me. You know what? I'm going to make my ministry about attacking Jeremiah. And I've seen that. I, I've seen people just go insane okay and start attacking you know a good man of god does that mean i agree with everything pastor anderson says no, i'm never going to find a pastor that i'm going to agree hundred percent with everything okay but can i recognize a man of god who's who and you know i'm not trying to make this sermon at pastor anderson but i'm just trying to take an illustration here right uh, you know if, if a man of god is, is preaching from god's word faithfully they love the soul winning they want to see souls saved and they've uh, you know uh they're sacrificing themselves for for god's people and for god's house you know i'm going to support that person you know even if there's something that i'm just a little bit ah oh, you know i don't think that's right what you just said you know what but hananiah he's obsessed with jeremiah so it's it's this unhealthy obsession and i've got to show myself better than jeremiah you know i've got to be contradictive to what he preaches be careful of people like this you know, there are entire YouTube channels dedicated to just attacking the ministry of Pastor Stephen Anson or other like-minded pastors. You know, these people are wicked. These are Hananiahs, you know, uh, in light of what we're reading here in Jeremiah chapter 28. Look at verse number 5. Then the prophet Jeremiah said unto the prophet Hananiah, in the presence of the priests and in the presence of all the people that stood in the house of the Lord, even the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. The Lord do so. The Lord perform thy words which thou hast prophesied to bring again the vessels of the Lord's house and all that is carried away captive from Babylon into this place. So Jeremiah is saying, man, you know what, Hananiah? You just preached a very positive sermon. I, I, yeah, amen. I want that to be the case. You know, Jeremiah is not this bloodthirsty prophet. You know, I can't wait for God to just come and destroy all the people. I can't just wait for pestilence to come and wipe us out and the swords. And I, I can't wait for seeing all these bodies just uh, lying on the, on the ground and, and then the wild animals eating up these bodies. That's not Jeremiah. J Jeremiah looks at this positive message and goes, man, that would be great. Amen. I hope that happens. I hope that within two years, you know, all the stuff come back. Things go back to normal. We're back to worshiping God's house and the Babylonians are far from here. Okay. Now, he, so he likes that. He likes that idea. He's not, again, he's not some bloodthirsty uh, prophet, but he's also being sarcastic. Because if you look at verse number seven, it's not like he says, you're right, Hananiah, what you're saying. He immediately goes and, and uh, you know, combats what Hananiah just said. Verse number seven. Nevertheless, there you go. <laughs> okay. That would be great, Hananiah. Nevertheless, okay. Hear thou now this word that I speak in thine ears. And in, in the ears of all the people, the prophets that have gone, sorry, that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. So Jeremiah has this reputation, as you know, that he's preaching about war, evil, pestilence. That's why they don't like Jeremiah. They don't like his negative message, right? And he says to Hananiah, yeah, but you know what, Hananiah? All the prophets that came before me, all the prophets that came before you, all the prophets of old preached the same message that I'm preaching to this nation. Okay? So Jeremiah is basically, you know, uh, is, is saying that, look, I, I'm not preaching something different. Like, I, I'm not this rare prophet that, that's come with this negative message. This is the same message that has been preached by men of God before me. And that really should be the case. You know, when a pastor or a preacher gets behind the pulpit, you know, a reminder, don't try to find some new fancy doctrine, you know, and, and just try to show your intelligence. What you should pre be preaching, if you have the same spirit of God that I have, that others have, guess what? When it comes to the major fundamental doctrines of the faith, 
When it comes to uh, major things of importance, the clear teaching, the Word of God, we should be on the same page. I should be on the same page as the prophets that have gone before. Look at that Trinity and Oneness. You know, the Trinitarian view, man, that, that goes on for generations after generations, for hundreds of years. There's nothing new about that. It's the same message that has been taught before because these are black and white uh, doctrines that are fundamental to the faith. And so basically, Jeremiah is saying, look, I've got the old prophets on my side. I'm just saying the same thing, Hananiah. You know? Now, some people might say that, you know, this is a logical fallacy. I don't know if you're familiar with that term. But basically, if you're debating with somebody, if you're arguing with someone, you've got two contrary views. There are many things that people say that are actually logical fallacies. And one logical fallacy is basically this. Well, I know I'm right because everyone else, you know, or, or everyone else in authority agrees that I'm right. Well, that doesn't mean you're right. <laughs> you know, that doesn't mean you're right. So it's kind of like, you know, it, it may sound like there's a, that there's this logical fallacy. Let me just give you an, an, uh, an example of this. I just looked this up very quickly because if, if you know your history a little bit, um, when it comes to cigarettes, uh, you know, when, th when these things were being marketed uh, in the early 1900s, they would use doctors. They would use, you know, physicians to basically, you know, recommend smoking cigarettes, like that it's good for your health kind of thing, right? And I just th I thought this was funny, but in the 1930s, there's a brand of cigarettes called the Lucky, Lucky Strike Cigarettes. Lucky Strike Cigarettes. And in their advertisement, they had 20,679 physicians say Lucky's is less irritating to your throat. 20,000. Over 20,000 doctors are saying, hey, smoke Lucky Strike Cigarettes. Okay, because it's not going to be so bad on your throat. Now, I, I don't, listen, do you really reckon, do you think that company went around speaking to 20,000 <laughs> doctors to get them to say yes? All right, look, but here's the thing. They're trying to make an argument from majority or an argument from authority. Just because the majority agree with something, it doesn't make it true. Okay? So just keep that in mind. But here's the thing. Jeremiah's pointing back to the majority, to the authorities, to the, to the prophets that have gone old, and he says, look, I believe just like them. Okay? So what he's basically saying is, it's not, and of course it's not a logical fallacy because the prophets are preaching God's word, right? It, it doesn't, for us it doesn't matter if it's the majority or if it's the minority. As long as it's coming from God's word, that's what we proclaim. That's what's true. It doesn't matter if it's unpopular. It doesn't matter if it is popular. Our job is to preach God's word regardless of if it's the majority position or the minority position. You know, those things are irrelevant as long as it's coming from the scriptures, as long as it's coming from God's prophets, okay? And again, Jeremiah points to that fact. They're not just prophets. These are men that were moved by the Holy Ghost, preaching these same things that I'm preaching to you. So what Jeremiah is saying is this. The burden of proof that we're going to be taken into captivity is not on me, okay? In fact, the burden of proof is going to be on Hananiah. Look at verse number 9. The prophet which prophesied of peace... Hey, that's Hananiah, the positive only preacher. When the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord have truly sent him. So Jeremiah is saying, look, the burden of proof is on you, Hananiah. Okay, you're, you're preaching peace, okay? But if it doesn't take place, that proves that you were not sent by God. Okay? So if you can keep your finger there, and please turn to Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18 for me, please. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse number 20. Again, keep your finger in Jeremiah 28. But go to Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse number 20. I just want to remind you, and I'm sure you already know this, but just a reminder how much God hates a false prophet. How much God hates lying. Specifically, if you say God said such and such, and it's not true, it's contradicted to God's word. All right? Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse number 20 says... But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the manner of other gods, even that prophet shall die. You know what? God had the death penalty for prophets that would lie. They would say, God said such a thing, where God never said such a thing. I would love that to be the case. How many churches would be wiped out right now? How many pastors would, would be wiped out right now? You know, put to death because they've lied about God's word. 
I mean, do, do you think the majority of preachers today, right now, preaching on Sundays, are preaching the truth? Or do you think it's a minority? It's a minority. I, I would love for these pastors to perish and then come and join a good church and get saved and, and learn about God. Right? I mean, I think this is wonderful. And again, it's the fear of God. There ought to be a fear on me before I get up to preach or some other man gets up to preach. Boy, I better make sure that I've checked everything that I'm saying to be true. Because if I step out of line and I say something God did not say, I'm worthy of death in God's eyes. Why do I say this? Well, you know, if you guys know politics a little bit, it's not, you, know, you don't even need to know all that much, right? But you guys know about the United States um, elections that took place last year, toward the end of last year? And, uh, you know, Trump versus Biden. Who got the presidency? Biden. Yeah? But Joe Biden in the United States. I can't believe how many, well I can believe it because there are so many false prophets, but there are so many false prophets that proclaims that Donald Trump was going to win, that Donald Trump would be the president for the next four years. And what's great about you know, the internet and YouTube, those statements are there forever. Okay? So if one of these people are saying that you know, uh, Donald Trump's going to win, he's going to be the president for the next four years, thus saith the Lord, you know, and it doesn't come to pass, that person needs to be put to death. Or, at the very least, I know that's not going to happen, but at the very least, you should stop listening to them, if you listen to them. You should say, this is a false prophet. God did not send them. Some, some uh, preachers that spoke that Donald Trump would be re-elected for four years, was, uh, one was Pat Robertson. I don't know if you know that name. He's an older man. He's a tele-evangelist and a former Southern Baptist pastor, turned charismatic. He's an older man. He was guaranteeing that Donald Trump's going to get back in. Made a prophecy. That guy should be put to death. There's, a, there's an author by the name of Mark Taylor. Um, he wrote these books called The Trump Prophecies. <laughs> the Trump Prophecies. And he too said that Donald Trump would be re-elected. That Mark Taylor needs to be put to death. There's a woman named Paula White very famous female preacher, Paula White. In fact, so famous, she was Donald Trump's spiritual advisor. Donald Trump watched her on TV, said, wow, she's, she's a great preacher. Hey, you come to the White House and you give me spiritual advice. Hey, she too said that Donald Trump would win the election. Okay? Guess what? Paula White should be put to death. In fact, nobody should even be listening to her because she's a woman. And you know, we look at these charismatics and these weirdos, and we know they're weird. But there's this other guy called Greg Locke. He's a former independent fundamental Baptist. You know, he's on YouTube, an outspoken pastor, same thing. Donald Trump guaranteed he's going to win the next four years. This is coming from the IFB world, okay? So the reason I brought him up, and he needs to be put to death, by the way. But the reason I'm bringing this up is, listen, yeah, I know we can laugh and point fingers at the charismatics and the weirdos out there. But this stuff can happen within the IFB churches as well. This same thing can, can happen at Blessed Hope Baptist Church if we're not alert. Okay? We ought to be people that desire to hear the truth of God's word and not the lies. Otherwise, that's rebellion against the Lord. Back to Jeremiah 28, verse number 10. Jeremiah 28, verse number 10. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and break it. I told you, he's obsessed. Instead of just leaving Jeremiah alone, Jeremiah's been walking around like that for years. Okay? He takes the yoke, smashes it, breaks it, right? Look how strong I am. I took on this guy. I took on Jeremiah. And Han I, I like how Jeremiah responds, but look, verse number 11. And Hananiah spake in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all nations within the space of two full years. I like Jeremiah. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. <laughs> it's like, I'm done, I'm done with you, Hannah. You know, because, you know, I, I think it's not, it's not enjoyable, like, interacting with false prophets. You know, at some point, you're just going to, you know, you go about your business. I, I'm, I'm going. If, if you guys want to listen to this guy, it's on you. You know, I've done my job to preach the truth. You know, I've, I've preached it again. You want to listen to this guy? You want to listen to the positive only preachers? And yes, that's where the people flock to. The big churches are the positive-only preachers. 
It's all good. God's happy. It's all peaceful. And they don't preach the judgment of God. Yet yeah, those churches are going to be full, brethren. It's, there's nothing new under the sun. You know what? Let's, we just go about our way. We just serve God. Okay? That's what we need to be. Be like Jeremiah. Now, at some point, you need to realize it's not worth arguing. Verse number 12. So I assume, I assume when we read verse number 12 that Jeremiah has probably gotten home, whatever. Then it says here, Then the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet. So now Jeremiah receives a new word, a new vision from the Lord. After that, Hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Go and, go and tell Hananiah, saying, So these are God speaking to Jeremiah. Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Thou hast broken the yokes of wood. So it says, you know what? You're right. You've broken off the yokes of wood. But thou shalt make for them yokes of iron. <laughs> so, you know, Hananiah's like, he it takes the yoke of wood, breaks it, right? He has broken the yokes of wood. Well done, well done, Hananiah. You know, but thou, again, thou, Hananiah, shall make for them yokes of iron. Hananiah, you are the reason that this captivity that the Babylonian takeover is going to be worse than what was originally planned. Originally, it was going to be wood. Yes, wood can be broken. But now, it's going to be iron. It's going to be a heavier you know, burden. It's going to be a heavier captivity. Iron is something you, you cannot break. It's going to be worse because of the false prophet. Worse because of Hananiah. Worse because the people are listening to Hananiah. Again, how many preachers today are preaching the truth versus those that are preaching lies? I mean, when, when God's full judgment and wrath, and we know it's going to happen in the end times, full, I mean, that is a yoke of iron. <laughs> when, when the Lord starts pouring out His wrath, because if, if, if Hananiah is, is frustrating God so much, what about our nation and all the false prophets that are going about teaching lies, rebelling against the Lord? Boy, you know, that, that yoke is going to be heavy, and it is heavy. You know, the Lord basically wipes out humanity almost, okay, when he pours out his wrath on the world. What am I up to, brethren? 14. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations, that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him, and I have given him the beasts of the field also. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord hath not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust in a lie. Trusting in a lie. Yes, you know, we, we can look at false prophets and false uh, doctrines and, you know, we need to understand that when we listen to the preaching of God's word, we need to identify what are lies, okay? Who's lying to me? Just because they, they look good on the outside... Just because they say some right things, brethren, you know, as soon as you figure out this person is a liar, you know, it's not he just made a mistake. It's not he just misspoke. He just had a, a bit of a twisted, you know, view on that piece of uh, scripture there. But someone that is purposely going out, preaching lies and saying, thus saith the Lord, you mark them, you avoid them, you have nothing to do with them. Okay? Find yourself a Jeremiah that's going to preach you the truth. Okay? Look at verse number 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This year thou shalt die. Hey, that sounds right. You've, you've prophesied a lie. This year thou shalt, shalt die, because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. So again, what is the rebellion against the Lord here? Teaching lies. Believing lies. Okay? That is ultimately what this is about. Rebellion against the Lord. Now, what a prophecy you know, Hananiah is saying, you know, within two years, we're going to be back to normal. It's all going to be awesome. Babylon's gone, going to be destroyed. Jeremiah's new message from the Lord is that with this year, within this year, thou shalt die. Okay? Because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. Now, I don't know what caused me to look this up, but um, I was on the internet last night, just randomly. I went to, that's right, I went to just Google News, just to see if there's any, any kind of developments or anything like that. And I saw this guy, I've, I've heard his name before. He goes by Reverend Bill Cruz. Does anyone know who that is? Reverend Bill Cruz? He's actually quite popular in Australia. He's a minister at the Ashfield Uniting Church. He's got his own um, Sunday night radio segment 
uh, on 2GB. If you know 2GB, it's quite a very, very popular you know, uh, radio station uh, on AM radio. So I've, I've heard that name before, Bill Cruz, Bill Cruz. And, uh, and basically, the article I was reading was an interview with this Bill Cruz, this uh, Ashfield Uniting Church minister. And I just thought, what's he going to say? You know, I just wonder, what is he, you know, is he going to say something true? Or is he going to preach lies? You know, is this a man who's rebellious against the Lord? Because I'm telling you, Australians look at this Bill Cruz and think, what a great man of God. What a great minister of God. He's looking out for the downtrodden. Okay? But when we compare him to a Hananiah or to a Jeremiah, which one is he, a true prophet of God or is he a false prophet? Well, let me just read to you a few statements that he said in his interview. He was talking about meeting up with the, the, the da, uh, Buddhist... What's it? The Dai... Uh, Dai uh, what do they call him? Sorry? Dai Lai Lama. Okay? The religious leader. You know, the, the Pope of Buddhism, if you want to call him that, right? And he was talking about how he met him. And, uh, you know, he, he loves the guy. He thinks he's funny. In fact, the Dai Lai Lama said about Bill Cruz, you make a really good Buddhist. <laughs> well, anyway, this is what he says. Bill Cruz says about Dai Lai Lama. I was looking in his eyes. And it was like looking right through his eyes to the Buddhist Dharma. But at the same time, I was looking right through Jesus' eyes to the kingdom. This guy has a name for Christianity. People think this is what a Christian minister, good pastor looks like. And he says, I can look at a false prophet and I can see Jesus' eyes. And then he says later on in the interview, the words, and this is a recent interview, just the last week. He says, the words of Jesus, Buddha and Muhammad, went into this bottomless well called human existence and then came out. He says this, people who go deeply into religion, their religion come out with a huge respect for other religions. They all touch something universal. So he's saying, the more you know your religion, the more you know the Bible, the more you know God, that you're going to ultimately enjoy the other religions of this world. I mean, that is just a bold-faced lie. Yep. The more you know the Bible, the more you know God, and the more you know Jesus Christ, the more you know His judgment, guess what you're going to end up with? You're going to be hating those false religions. You're going to be hating those false prophets that are leading people to hell. Positive only preacher, though. All right? Hananiah. This guy's Hananiah. And then this is what he says toward the end of the interview. They ask him for some uh, advice. He says, Well, keep moving towards the universe, whatever that is. Keep moving because as you move towards the universe, it comes and meets you in strange, amazing ways. Who is his God? He speaks of Jesus, but then he's interested in meeting this strange and wonderful universe. This is not a believer of God. He looks at creation, and creation to him is God. The universe is God to this man. You know what that reminds me of? Romans chapter 1, verse 25, speaking about reprobates, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. This guy has taken the truth of God and turned it into a lie. He teaches rebellion against God and he worships the creature or the creation over the creator. Oh, the universe. I can't wait to meet the universe with all the, my Buddhist friends and whatever. Anyway, I wasn't going to talk about him, but like I said, I just randomly, randomly came across it last night and I thought, oh dear, okay, this ties in with what we're looking at. Guess what? Reverend Bill Cruz needs to be put to death as well. Amen. Back to Jeremiah 28. Verse number 17. So Hananiah the prophet died <laughs> the same year in the seventh month. Okay, so how long did this guy live after he started, you know, clashing with Jeremiah? Well, we saw here that he died in the seventh month and we looked at verse number one, which said, and it came to pass in the same year, in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year, in the fifth month. So this guy lives for two, two months. Right? Two, two, he's prophesying, it's all going to be good in two years. And God says, you know what? Yeah, let's just kill this guy in two months. He dies. All right, he's done. 
And so that's the end of Jeremiah 28. You know, Jeremiah taking on a false prophet. You know, praise God that, you know, Jeremiah is just standing up, speaking the truth. But just remind yourselves, you know, if, if you ever get frustrated with church, why isn't our church growing? Why aren't more people coming? Just remind yourself, it's just, this is how it is. Okay? If, if you want to hear God's word, we're, we're going to be an unpopular church. I'm going to be an unpopular preacher. And you know what? We're going to offend people from time to time. We might have people come and they don't like to preach and they're going to go. So be it. You know, let's just be Jeremiah. Let's just preach the truth, even if it's unpopular. And let's not turn to the ways of the false prophets, you know, and learn their ways, which is, you know, rebellion against the Lord.